Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett, and today I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to attempt to weld this broken bandsaw back together again. And if you're new here today and you like woodworking, you enjoy learning about tools and different aspects of woodworking, I invite you to subscribe. Uh, click the little notification bell and that way you'll hear about every video as I upload it. So stick around and let's see if we can actually weld this thing back together again. Well, this is the third bandsaw blade that I've broken in my lifetime. And normally these things are spot welded together, but I don't have a spot welder. So apparently I've read that you can solder them together. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to make a bit of a lap joint and solder them together. Normally I wouldn't care because uh, these blades aren't all that expensive except this one is still pretty new and it's still very sharp. So in this case I'm going to make an effort and see if I can. And anyway it's just nice to experiment and see if we can do these things. The first thing I need to do is to make a jig to hold the bandsaw blade straight while I solder it and I'm going to use this angle iron and I'll just hack off a piece of it and then I'll cut a notch in it so that I can weld the blade in that notch. Well, that kind of moved around on me, but uh, I got all the holes cut. What I need to do, I want to cut this out as a notch here. So what I'm going to do is go to my drill press and just drill some holes in some of these and they'll just knock out and then I'll just grind them uh, so that they're flat. This other part that I cut out, all that's for is to a uh, grip so that I can hold this in the vise. There, I'll just grind those now. Now the whole purpose of using metal was, first of all, so I can hold it, uh, but also so that it stays flat. So that's good. Now I'm going to need to hold the bandsaw tight against something. It needs to be level across here, but this is rounded. So what I'm going to do in the last project and the little piece of wood that I routed, it fits in there just perfect. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it to the table saw and just cut a thin strip all the way along there and then I'll glue that on there and that'll give me a nice flat base that I can put the bandsaw blade against. There, those fit on there perfectly and while I was grinding this off, I took a moment to clean this up and I've just mixed up some two-part epoxy so I'm going to put some epoxy on the back here and glue that. It's five minute epoxy so it won't take long for this to harden up. Make sure I get it down low. There we go. I need to make a beveled lap joint uh, but I'm going to square the end off a little bit first of all. There's my two grinds. Now I'm just going to clamp them to the jig here so that they overlap. And I've tested them. They seem to line up pretty nicely uh, without too much bulk. So uh, let's see if we can clamp those. Well, my camera doesn't seem to want to focus on here, but I've got these lined up here. You can see the clamps on either side here, and I, they're right tight up against the wood, so it's, it is a nice straight line, and I've got them overlapping a little bit. Uh, now I'm going to put some flux in there, and I only have paste flux, and they say it doesn't work, but it's all I have, so I'm going to try it uh, and just see if that works. 
Now flux, I'm told, is basically uh, it helps the solder uh, bond, but it's also a cleaner. So it does a couple of things. It helps the, the solder to flow and it cleans the area. Now I've got my torch going, as you can see, uh, and I don't want to put a lot of heat on there. So what I'm going to do, that flux should draw the solder right in, and I don't want to put a lot of heat on this joint uh, because I don't want to heat up that blade and make it brittle. So what I'm going to do, or take the tension out of it rather, uh, what I'm going to do is just allow the, the flux to melt, and then I'll just hit it with a little bit of solder, and hopefully it'll draw right in there. Well, that's my solder job, and I can see that there's solder on both sides, so the, the solder flowed through just like it, it should. Uh, I can feel ever so slightly a bit of a lump there, so when I run my hands along it, I can see, I can feel where that joint is, and I was hoping it would be nice and level, but maybe if I would have done more grinding, uh, it might do that, but <laughs> this is my first time. I don't even know if this is going to work, so I'm going to go bring the bandsaw over, and we'll install this in it, and uh, we'll see if it works. Well, there you can see my crude attempt at the uh, solder job, but you know, when I turn the bandsaw on, it runs fine. The bandsaw without any wood pushing through it is running fine, so the proof is really now what's it going to cut like, and we'll see if it makes any difference. It may be pretty forgiving. <laughs> And that's running just fine. It's running the same as it always has, even with that tiny little bit of a lump in there. So pretty easy to do. You can fix your own bandsaw blades that simply. Well, I must say, I'm, I'm pretty amazed how easy that was. Uh, this jig was, even if it is a bit rudimentary, uh, it worked great for putting the bandsaw blades together. Um, the little disc sander sanded it fine. As I said, there's still a tiny bit of a lump there, but I guess if I have to do this again, I'll get better and better at it. Uh, and the bandsaw blade is holding fine. Little jig works good. I'm Colin Canep for Woodwork Web. Don't forget to uh, subscribe because I got lots more videos coming. <laughs>